interactions between Hiccup and Ashton throughout the movies and different TV series are never cluttered with cutesy crap, but rather any moments of romance are simple and sweet. A perfect example of one of those moments comes in the second installment of the How to Train Your Dragon movie trilogy when Hiccup is sitting atop a giant rock fixture looking out to the open ocean and contemplating who he is and the idea of him becoming a chief. All the while, Astrid sits gently beside him, providing words of wisdom and braiding his hair. Those two little braids, how could two little braids on that shaggy mess of hair make an animated character seem so adorable? Well, there's actually more to this moment than I initially realized, and that's what we're gonna talk about today. Hey y'all, I'm the Geek Apprentice, just a weird curly haired lass who's passionate about many geeky things. If you also enjoy talking about these things and perhaps enjoy themed videos such as positively unpopular opinions, sorting videos, and more, then be sure to consider subscribing. So, Hiccup's two little braids. When do we first see them? We do not see these braids for the first major chunk of the How to Train Your Dragon lore. Throughout the first movie, the first few shorts, the first couple of TV series, Dragons, Defenders of Berk, and Dragons, Riders of Berk, Hiccup is just a scrawny, tiny little 15, roughly 15 year old Viking, who apparently was canonically 90 pounds at that time, sporting a hairstyle that is flat and stringy. In the short titled Dawn of the Dragon Racers, we kind of see a transition phase between the first two TV series and the Netflix series. And we see this transition in the form of a flashback. In these flashbacks, we see that his hair is already a little bit thicker and he seems to be a little bit taller, which I was unsure about at first because when you put him next to Astrid in that short, in those flashbacks, he looks roughly the same compared to her, but Astrid could have also grown and then eventually Hiccup has his growth spurt. And also I recognize that the thicker hair might be due to poor animation budgets. But still. But once we get to the Netflix series Dragon's Race to the Edge, Hiccup and his friends are now roughly 18, 19 years old, and he himself has had a major growth spurt, now canonically being about 6 feet tall and hopefully more than 90 pounds, but probably not by much, and his hair is a lot thicker and shaggier. This change is a mix of, obviously, teenage hormones and growing up and changes to your body, but also the excessive time speeding through the air on his dragon toothless. In addition, we see two tiny little braids poking out the right side of his head. That's new, but I mean, that's probably a Viking thing, right? Well, let's see about that. Most modern adaptations of Viking culture tend to have Vikings sporting these really crazy fancy braids, even the men. But as far as I could tell, the only culture that had any significance with braids was the Native American culture. Depending on the tribe, braids could symbolize status or it could symbolize wisdom and strength. But as far as Norse mythology and Viking culture goes, the idea that men and women sported these really intricate fancy braids is kind of just a made up thing that we've done here in the future. <laughs> men did not adorn braids in their hair and women only did if perhaps they were married or needed to get it out of their face for war because there were a lot of female warriors. And even then, they were pretty simplistic. What does that mean for How to Train Your Dragon, though? Could braids still have significance in the world of How to Train Your Dragon? I don't think so. It just seems to be a stylized thing. The most significant point I could find is that maybe it's a trait of the hooligan Viking tribe, Hiccup's tribe, seeing as pretty much every hooligan tribe member, man or woman, has braided hair and then for the men, beards and mustaches. But that's the most significant thing I could find. So while it doesn't have any cultural significance, does it have significance between Astrid and Hiccup? Yes. So who put the braids in? First guess would be Hiccup, but that's actually not the case. We know that Astrid is the one responsible for the braids in Hiccup's hair, or at least in the second film during that aforementioned scene. And you know, that was long after they were already betrothed. But Hiccup has these braids already in Dragon's Race to the Edge, which takes place roughly two years before the second film. Was Astrid responsible for those braids? Now this is where it gets pretty interesting. You see, there was something I read recently that kind of led to this whole discussion. I read a comment from director Dean DeBloy in an interview back in like 2014 where he said Hiccup actually does not like the braids but tolerates Astrid putting them in. Kind of makes sense judging by the face he makes when she initially starts braiding. <laughs> and thus, judging by this comment, Astrid had to be the one that put them in 
proprietor race to the edge. Because of the nature of that scene where she's braiding his hair in the second film is so sweet, does that mean they were a couple before the Netflix series led us to believe? I don't think so. The beginning of their committed romantic relationship is clearly defined in that series. They were certainly already very close friends and relied on one another heavily on certain things. We know Hiccups had a crush on her for pretty much forever, so naturally he would tolerate this even before they were in a relationship. Astrid, on the other hand, well, despite the many, many kisses she's already given him, at least when they were roughly 15 years old, she seems pretty unaware of her deeper affections for the one-legged, Night Fury riding Viking. In two separate conversations with her really good friend Heather in the Netflix series, she's caught completely off guard when Heather brings up the idea of them being a couple. And by the second conversation, it's more like denial. Obviously, as we all know, she eventually realizes that her affections towards him run deeper than just a friendship and that she, like Hiccup towards her, is ready to commit herself to him in a romantic way. So yeah, logically, the braids were put there by Astrid before they were even in a relationship, and it kind of serves as an early sign of their commitment to one another, Hiccup pretty knowingly and Astrid subconsciously, and how relaxed, natural, and comfortable they are with one another. It's refreshing, really. Even in Race to the Edge, the moments of sappiness are really far and few between, despite their direct romance toward one another being so new. In fact, most of their more romantic interactions are just simple and tender, just like when Astrid is helping Hiccup work through some self-discovery issues as they sit high above the waters, all the while Hiccup calmly listens, tolerating Astrid braiding his hair. What are your thoughts on all of this? Spell them out in the comment section below. This topic and this moment are probably not things that people have thought about a lot, but it was just so tender and sweet that I had to do more digging. If you enjoyed your time here, be sure to subscribe and check out my Twitch channel as well. But that's all for today, thank you for watching. And of course, thank you so much to my patrons like Justin, Greg, and Andrew. Y'all's support is very much appreciated. And if anyone else would like to get in on the special stuff that I offer my patrons, just go to patreon.com slash thegeekapprentice. The link is in the description below.